Good day, good day. I see Stephen is in the house. Nicole, how are you doing? And Nicole, my love, I'm really, really sorry. Um, I missed our appointment over the weekend. Things were happening. It's uh, It was all over the place, but um, I'm, I'm glad you've uh, picked up another time. Russ Crawley, thank you so much for tuning in. And Charlie, Charlie White, how are you going, my man? Thank you so much. Stephen Snedden, hope you had a great weekend. And Jillian, how are you? Great stuff. Guys, obviously, um, if you're just tuning in, thank you so much. Um, I will be acknowledging everyone as we go along. Lee, how's it going there in the States? Marty Amos, thank you so much. Great stuff. Right. Okay. So for those that know me, it's all good, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and if this is the first time you're tuning into the um, Lunch and Learn, um, welcome, Bill Coleman. And depending on where you are in the world, can you please just type in the city or the state where you're at so that we know how far this reach is going. All right. My name is Prosper. Taruvinga and um, basically for those that know I help small businesses like yours to actually start scale and grow um, their online uh, online presence using digital marketing strategies all right and um, I will be helping you to curate and actually create a very very um, essential online footprint so that you can optimize your business for growth and for profit. So every single day um, at 2 p.m. AEST, we sit around here for 30 minutes and then we discuss ways how we can actually help you earn more money with less struggle. And I will help you build systems and also have uh, strategies and also mindsets that will actually help you stand out in a crowded market and you also get recognition in your industry doing what you absolutely love, all right? So thank you so much for those that are tuning in and please just type in where you're tuning in from just so that, you know, I know if my content is gonna be relevant for you. Dakota, thank you so much for tuning in. Glad to see you live and um, work, uh, you know, you know, um, sharing ideas as we go. So today, my live feed can end in 10 minutes. The reason being, I only want to tell you three things you have to be doing at any given time online. First of all, you have to be building an audience. Second of all, you have to be engaging with that audience. And third of all, if you want to have a business that's profitable, you have to be selling to that audience. All right. You build the audience, you engage that audience, and then you sell to that audience. At any given time on your online, um, you know, marketing or online activities, if you're not doing any of those three things, you have to start questioning yourself, all right? Build the audience that you want to engage so that they get to know, like, and trust you, and then you can sell to them. That's it. That's, that's all you've got to be doing at any given moment. First of all, you can't sell to people that don't quite know you yet. Second of all, you can't engage people that don't understand what your message is, what your product is, etc., etc. So at any given moment, you have to be creating an audience that actually knows you, that trusts you, and they want to do and continue doing business with you. And second of all, you have to be engaging with those people so that they get to know more about you, building your credibility and building your trust. At the end of the day, once you've got all of that in place, you got to figure out a way to build them. And that's how you sell to that audience. All right. So, Duncan, thank you so much for tuning in. Bumble. Do you know what I mean? Um, some people are doing it all. Some people are trying to do a lot of things at, 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 at the same time. But none of the things that they're doing is actually working. You have to be maintaining positive relationships with people that you're going to be expecting money from. All right. You have to be giving those people quality content so that they constantly engage with your stuff. And then they know that you're the person that they can go to. All right. Once you're always doing that, observe and learn. Find out how can you be the best person to be helping them solve all of their problems. 
All right. So some of us are, are doing it all. Some of us are really not checking out. What are we doing in order to be in front of the people we're going to be asking money from at the end of the day? Suffer us. I see you tuning in, buddy. Thank you so much for tuning in. I don't know. Are you, are you, are you around here close by or something? Let me know what's going on. Uh, Marshall, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So we might try and, and, and be everything to everyone. But people only buy from those that they know, like, and trust. All right? Have you built an audience that's big enough for you whenever you have, um, you know, a, a, a product or whenever you have some sort of a solution for them so that they can come back to you? Have you been doing that? Is that part of your strategy? You should ask yourself that question. Sally Holden, thank you so much for tuning in again today. All right? So most businesses, they might have an online presence. They might have the grind mentality. They might have the, the hustle mentality. Because you know what? Traditionally, businesses had, you know, required you to have an increased production. You had to do everything manually so that you stay on the competitive edge. But these days, everything is done, um, you know, technologically. Why would you continuously be grinding and doing things that you're not supposed to be doing or things that you're not good at instead of outsourcing all of those things? Your main efforts should be maintained and should be kept on you building an audience so that you can create and relate for them and then sell them back the things that you've created for them. All right. So back in the time, they used to think that if you arrived at the office early and you leave late, that person is labeled as a hard worker. You know what I mean? We've been we've been taught to think that for you to actually attain some sort of economic freedom or professional success, you need to spend hours upon hours with your nose on the grindstone. That is not working if you're not producing the results that your customers are happy to pay you money for. All right? So for most entrepreneurs, you know what I mean? When you start that business, you know, it leads to for some, yes, financial freedom uh, and personal freedom. But as your business grows, you have to let go of a few things. You have to actually start concentrating on what am I good at? Who needs what I'm selling in order for you to be a success? You know, there's just one simple rule. It's not the number of hours that you put in or you spend. It's the ultimate outcome of your efforts. Are you relating enough? Are you connecting enough? Are you engaging enough? That's all that has to matter. You know what I mean? And when you start taking the right actions, that's, you know, the, the when you start taking the right actions in your business and what you're really capable of, that's when you, you, you go, you do away with burning out. And that's the most powerful thing that would happen so that you can continue working. A lot of us get tired and get burned out because we're doing it all. We're trying to please people that don't even want to buy from us. We're trying to reach to people that don't even know us yet. And like I said, every single moment of your working time in your business, you have to be building an audience that you're going to engage. And once you engage them, then you've got the right to sell to them. The more you engage them, the more value you are giving your customers or your future prospects. It will then make it easy for you to convert. You can never sell to somebody who doesn't trust you, who doesn't know you, or who doesn't see your credibility. All right? So remember that every single time that you, you are working, that's not the measure of, of, of the success that you're going to have. All right, no matter how many hours you put in, if you're doing it and putting them in on the wrong tasks, are you going to succeed? I don't think so. All right, so remember that time is not an adequate measure for hard work. Hard work is, you know, is actually associated with simply the outputs that you bring out. All right, the actions that you do and the results that you pull out. Are you selling enough? Are you connecting enough? Are you getting referrals? Are people coming back for renewing their contracts? If none of that is happening, then what's the whole point in the hard work that you're putting in? All right? No one else can actually determine the, the, the amount of hours that you're working, but the output is what everybody sees. 
right? They say that you have to work 10,000 hours, etc., etc. But in that 10,000 hours, if you're not doing anything to build an audience, if you're not doing anything to engage that audience, and if you're not doing anything to sell to that audience, then I don't think you're working enough. All right. So, you know, the true measure of your hard work and, 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 and success is actually your personal awareness to know, have you worked to the best of your ability to actually achieve your business goals? Are you making the money that you want? Are you creating the personal freedom that you actually want within that business? You know, you can thrive as a business owner by continuously, you know, you know, taking all these jobs that are not meant for you. But if your actions are determined, I mean, if your actions are geared towards you getting the results of the sales, of actually um, connecting to your customers, then you will continuously stay ahead of your competition. Right now, I need you to take, take a bit of audit on the work that you're doing. Is any of the work that you've been doing since morning or since whatever time it is in your, in your country there, have you been building an audience, knowing the right kind of people, figuring out what exactly is their pain, how can you solve their problems? Are you working towards understanding your customer? Because you can't sell to somebody who you have not influenced. So you have to periodically review your work habits and eliminate non-productive tip, uh, you know, tasks. Mukesh says very practical. Thank you so much, man. Do you know what I mean? We, we, we worry about being so perfect as a business person, but that doesn't equate to productivity. We, we worry about putting out the best work out there, but who is it meant for? Are you actually knowing the people that need to see that perfect work? Do you actually know what the, your prospects' problems are that you're going to be solving? So you got to free, free up your time, you know, from, from, from completing non-essential work. Audit yourself. What are you doing? Are you building an audience? Are you engaging that audience? Or are you selling to that audience? If you're doing none of the above, stop what you're doing and maybe outsource most of the work. All right, you gotta start eliminating tasks that add unnecessary burden without any rewards. That's the reason why people don't see any progress within your work. That's the reason why people burn out because you're not meant to be doing some of the work that you say you're grinding and doing. All right, so you know, sometimes you, you just really need to eliminate some of these tasks that are not giving you the desired outcome. And you will find out that most of the work that, that you think you're doing, maybe you're not really good at writing blogs, outsource that stuff. Maybe you're not really good at um, writing email campaigns, outsource that stuff. All right? At the end of the day, we, we, we're trying all of these things to, to make sure that we stay relevant to the people. But if you burn out, then what good are you going to be to the audience that you're trying to create? So like I keep saying, make sure that you're building that audience, maintaining it by engaging with them, by giving them, you know, a valuable content that will actually leave you in a position of being an authority. All right. When you inspire people to want more, do more and achieve more, they will then start paying attention to you. You can't sell to people that have no trust in what you're going to be doing or telling them or pointing them towards the direction um, uh, to your stuff. All right. Um, let me just uh, connect with these people. McCoy says, instead of thinking how I can sell to this person, say, how can I serve them? Exactly. All right. Because at the end of the day, the, the selling decision remains with the customer. Be in front of them enough to make sure that you're helping them with the decision-making process, all right? And then you, you want to make sure that you over, um, when you build that audience, people already know who you are, etc., etc. You are actually providing them with the most, you know, that, that well-needed, um, you know, confidence in that you're going to be following through with your commitments and what it is that you promised. All right. So under promise and over deliver. That's just as simple as it is. Most of us online, we're burning out online because we are trying to 
over promise and then we can't really meet up and uh, uh, reach out to those um, you know uh, perceived expectations all right so all that time that you spend worrying about anything is time that you've squandered just be true to yourself and show people that you can actually help them by actually helping them all right people are burning out because they're over deliver over promising and under delivering so when you complete each task before moving to the next thing you you actually are finishing everything and you take away stuff that is going to stress you or frustrate you and you become of service to those that actually need you all right so you you do take things slowly you're, you're not rushing anywhere because the more you burn out the more less important you're going to be to the people that you think you're serving all right and then give yourself plenty of rest guys because there's no way that you're going to show up and start working and delivering a service when you're not you know 100 percent yourself your passion needs to be always and constantly showing you know what i mean in all aspects of your life you know you're you're going to be demanded of your energy people follow where the energy is all right so if you're not going to be properly rested properly educated and as in informing yourself how to actually complete your tasks it will be difficult for you to actually show the enthusiasm the passion for you to actually build an, an audience of people that would want to follow you or actually buy stuff from you all right so if you constantly burn the midnight oil it becomes ineffective because who are you going to be serving in the morning hours when you're tired and you've got bags on, on your face so by ensuring that all your actions are moving you forward towards building that audience you know connecting with them and actually creating stuff that they want because a lot of us are trying to sell things that people don't want online yeah can you ask yourself right now in your in your you know products um product suit do is what you're selling really wanted by the people you're trying to sell it to do they really want yet another app? Do they really want yet another gizmo that you're selling them? That's the reason why it's not working. Because you're not taking time to actually learn who your audience is and find out what is the pain that is they're going through that you can serve them and help them. All right. Most of the things that we may try to, to put to our audience, maybe it's because they don't want it. They probably are tired of it. You know, so you really, really, really need to figure out is what I'm doing or what I'm selling really needed? Am I needed in the marketplace? That's where most of the people are falling out because they haven't really studied the market to see if their product is needed. That happens in the stage when you're building the audience. What are people going to want from you? What will they need from me? That's what you need to figure out. And when you figure out that part, you now go back to the market with a product that actually is needed because you are there building that audience for that particular product. And then you now teach them what to want. And in the process, you figure out a way to build them. That's by selling to them. There's a lot of ways that you can reach out to your customers and just don't trust the one. Most of which a lot of us are on social media, right? Are you fully utilizing the capabilities that social media has in order to build an audience in order to engage that audience and in order to sell that audience in your own um you know maybe let's just begin with the basics this this could be funny for you right now but let's just begin with the basics what is social media marketing can somebody type it for me there what is social media marketing What's your understanding of marketing on social media? I see Stephen is on, Brigitte is on. Can you just type in your own words what you think social media marketing is? Um, Dakota says, I, took, I look from the point of view of the customer, even acting or doing things that my target audience um, does give me insight. Exactly, Dakota. Because you have to sell, you have to speak your audience language, you have to... Um, you know, you have to be in order to understand the person that you're going to sell to. All right. Uh, Mukesh said social media marketing is making friends. Great. And Lisa connecting, helping and giving good stuff. 
Do you know what I mean? Mohammed, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Nicole says connecting with your audience. Right. We, this is just the basics, guys. To simply put it in a way which everyone can relate to. Social media marketing is essentially marketing using, you know, social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, etc., etc. Yeah? Now, why do people market using social media? Why are you marketing on social media? Why don't you use any other website that is not a social media marketing, um, you know, marketing platform? Why are you using social media to market? Would you know? I see Ricky Martin has just tuned in. How are you going, buddy? Yes, why? If it's a means to connect with people, why are you using social media as a marketing tool? Steven Seaton says it's free. That's a good point. All right. Uh, Annalisa says people are constantly on it and ensures that you are human. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. The reason why we're gravitating to using social media marketing, first of all, yes, like you said, it's free. But Steven, if something is free, then somebody is supposed to be paying for it. And if you're not paying for it, then you're the product. You need to figure out what is your position within the social media ecosystem. Are you helping or are you taking away from what is already on there? All right. Mukesh says that's where your target audience is. You are there because that's where all the eyeballs are. All right. To get people's attention, to generate sales, you want to create brand awareness. All of those things will help you be in front of the audience that you're building. And it's an easier way because people are already on social media. But guess what? People like buying stuff, but they don't like being sold to. So you need to make sure that you're just making friendly recommendations. Because if your friend recommends something to you, then you are more than happy to try it out or check it out. All right. But some of us are just jumping on there and, and then imposing our products. They're not building an audience. They're actually not even... Um, uh, you know, nurturing that audience and they're actually trying to just sell everything that they have, whether people like it or not. And that's the reason why you're not being successful. Yeah. By the time you finish watching this video, you probably have learned some few awesome tips. If you know what your mission is online, your the way you operate the whole Facebook thing will change. Are you there to build an audience? Are you there to teach that audience what to want in terms of your product or understanding what that audience wants so that you can create a product that suits them? And if you now know that your market message is all fitting with those, pro uh, you know, those prospects, you can now sell to them because you can't sell anyone anything if they don't have any passion. I mean, if, if, if they don't like you or if they don't actually know what you're selling. Yeah. So this is now how you then utilize this free resource that we have because you got to have relationships with all those people that you're going to be recommending products to. You know, before we actually go any further, guys, one thing you should know about social media marketing is it's important that every person that you meet on there is every profile that you meet on social media is a person. That's when, like what Steven says, you interact with them and, you know, those potential clients. How many of your clients do you actually talk with? How many of your clients do you actually interact with? If you meet any of the people you've sold products to, can you actually high five them on the street? Can you? Then how do you expect them to talk about you at a barbecue if you don't have relationships with them? I always use the barbecue, uh, you know, scenario because that's when people are meeting, mixing and mingling, talking about everything else. And if your products cannot be talked about in a space where you haven't instigated that, t that talk, then you're as good as not being in business. So if you can't high five your clients in real life, I think you really need to figure out, are you selling the things that they actually do want? You know, relationships need to be built in some way and social media makes it easy. So give very vital importance to this, guys. As good as any relationship that you have with people in, per in, in person, you should also carry it forward onto the online space. Do you know what I mean? Your relationships with your customers is, is what is now considered a priceless asset. 
When you build an audience, you're building those relationships for people that can even do the word of mouth for you. That actually know what you're selling and can tell other people about your stuff. Steven Sidon says, I always like to go to a Barbie and, and they already know all about you. <laughs> of course. It's because of the things that you put out on your social media because you are on your mission to build an audience, nurture that own audience with information and give them, you know, the vital, um, you know, ingredients to know what it is that you're actually working on and then sell to them. All right. So you have to be very empathetic in particular. Right now, there's most of your clients are out there in Florida or in Houston, Texas, and some of them are being affected by the floods, but you're still trying to sell them stuff. Do you think they will care more about your product or care about their own safety? How are you going to know what your customers are going through if you don't pay attention? All right. Empathy is particularly extremely important. Help your audience to actually connect with you by entering into their world. How many of your customers have you checked if they're safe right now in Florida? How many of your customers have you checked if, if they're going through okay in, in Texas through the hurricanes? Do we only just need their money or do we actually have to care what they're going through? You know, right now you probably have ads going around and they are targeting people that are trying to save their lives on, 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 you know, uh, in the hurricanes. Do you think those people are going to buy from you? Yeah. And if you really care about people, you start worrying about the quality of stuff that you impose onto them. Would you give your friends crap content? Would you share with your friends, people that you really care about, content that's not going to benefit them? In as much as I'm consistent with these videos, but I always make sure there's at least a point. You know why? Because I actually do care. I'm a consultant that works from the heart. All right? Even if you want to be consistent, it doesn't mean you have to peddle gunk out there because it's people that have feelings, people that have blood, it's people that you want to build an audience from. It's these people that are actually going to help you, afford you that lifestyle that you actually want. Yes, exactly. Like what Steven Sidden says, you know, shocking what's happening in Burma too. If you've got clients in Burma, are you checking in on them? Or do you just check in on them when you want their credit card? So make sure the quality of stuff that you're putting out there, don't put too much pressure on yourself if you cannot handle it. All right? Because the, if you start slacking, then you're no longer providing value, then you're no longer inspirational, and then you're no longer positioning yourself as a person that can help anyone with their, um, you know, whatever problems they are. Alright, so don't overcommit yourself. Make sure all the content that you're dishing out there is quality content because your mission is to actually build an audience, maintain that audience, and then eventually sell to them. Those are the three things you have to be doing at any particular given time in the online space. And once you know why you're doing it, where you're supposed to be doing it, you will actually start being mindful of the stuff you post out there and how you sell to your audience. And wh while you're building your audience, it's easier for you to observe and actually learn so that you can be of value. It's a very, very important tactic that can be used in social media marketing over the years. Do you know what I mean? Because now that you've got a global reach, you need to particularly understand what problems are you actually solving. And people are more than happy to give you all that information. Don't just do something just because it feels right. Spend time on research. Spend time on actually building a brand that's supposed to outlast, not just peddling out, you know, stuff that is not needed. All right. Spend some time on a lot of research, finding out who are you actually serving and what do they actually need from you. That way you become so particularly different to your competition because no one is spending time trying to actually provide a service. They just want money from their, you know, users. All right. So keep keep up to date with what your what's happening around your clients work. Be very empathetic. And at the end of the day, all you really got to know, guys, all you really got to figure out is, are you building an audience? 
Are you creating and relating for that audience so that you can sell to them? Those are the only three major activities you've got to be doing at any particular time online. And Nicole says 30 minutes fly by quickly. Of course. <laughs> and time goes by when you're having so much fun. All right. I really want you guys to win online. I really want you guys to actually do more and, and, and earn more money with less struggle. Stop doing, you know, you know, work that doesn't give results. Stop just hustling and not creating and relating for those people you're going to be demanding money from. All right. This is people we're talking to, people with feelings, people that actually understand that, yes, you're going to need money at the end of the day, but you've got to make them aware and realize that you're the person that, that they should pay. All right. OK, so I'm really hoping that we start you off, um, you know, this week on a very, um, you know, high note and you are actually going in there to to figure out how you can actually create and relate for those people that you're supposed to be serving. First of all, don't forget to be building an audience at any particular time when you're online. While you're building that audience, nurture them, get them, train them to know you, to like you, to trust you, because people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. And then pretty much after that, then you can start selling to them because you can't sell to anyone that you haven't inspired enough or you can't sell to somebody that doesn't trust you. Not only does it just help you, you're actually helping those that you want to serve. In the meantime, guys, thank you so much for checking out these videos. And if you are really enjoying them and you're inspired, please share them so that we grow the audience and it makes more, you know, worthwhile for us to be out here online. I really want you to get more money, you know, with less struggle online. Let's continue this conversation in the bottom. In the meantime, let's have a fantastic week, guys.